and welcome back. Recently I made this table topper with diamonds in it and this was the first time that I'd been working with diamonds and well they presented a little bit of a challenge. The 60 degree diamond ruler from Easy Cut, Easy Quilting, sorry, Easy Quilting did help a lot. So let me show you how to use the Easy Quilting ruler and a few tips on how to make this table topper a lot easier and smoother. Hi, I'm Wendy J. Haney and thank you for joining me. I'm here to help you learn that quilting is not intimidating. It can be fun and exciting and yeah, something to really enjoy your entire life. So let's get started. Okay, I bought this pattern, the Diamond Snowflake, from my local fabric store. I thought it was very pretty and it came as a kit, so that's always nice. And then I opened it up and, oh, you need a 60 degree diamond ruler. Well, actually, you don't have to have the ruler. Plenty of other rulers that you probably have in your quilting space, if you've been doing this for a while, if not, eh, maybe not, can be used to create a 60 degree cut and get your diamonds. But I'm all about efficiencies. And a lot of times, if you have the right ruler, Things go way smoother, less apt to get your angle wrong, and it's just, it's more fun because it's easier. So I got the 60 degree diamond ruler from Easy Quilting. So I'm gonna show you how to use that. This size is good for anything from a one inch finished diamond, and when I say finished height, I mean top to bottom this way, not this way, so from your yeah, so there to there. So you can do a one inch all the way up to a four inch diamond with this size ruler. And I'm sure there are others out there that you can get even bigger, right? There always is. On it, it shows you the finished height and then it also shows you what you're cutting. So for my project, I needed three and a half inch cut strips to get my three inch diamonds. So I've already pre-cut my, um, my fabric strip. So the first thing I do is I want to make the first cut and your fabric has a salvage over here and you want to make sure you don't cut into that. Yes, you could easily trim that off first, but why bother with that step if you don't need to? So on the ruler, I've got my three and a half inch cut line. So I'm going to just line that up and make sure the tip of it doesn't infringe into the salvage. And that way, there we go. I can cut my first strip. And then we just flip it over and we finish it off. And I know I won't have any problem with it infringing into my salvage because I was careful with that the first time. There we have it. And then all you do is you just continue to move down your strip, lining up the top, lining up the top, and lining up your angle, and you're good to go. And you get your next diamond. And I am not going to show you over and over how to cut the same thing. Basically, you cut as many diamonds as you need. Then you can do a variety of things with it. You might have a pattern like I do that I'm already working with, but you could just start playing with your diamonds and put them in a variety of different configurations. And you might find a really cool design that you like. So look at there. I now have a six pointed star. That looks pretty cool. So we would stitch these together kind of in rows this way, and then you've got two sets, and then you sew them together. So I kind of like that. Might need to do something with that one. And I want to thank Elaine Nyquist for sharing some fabric from her stash. She had this beautiful um, pink and green floral print, which is not traditionally something that I would have in my stash. I go towards more brights and things, but it's such a pretty color and some coordinating fabric. And then I went out and with the help of my husband, we picked out some other coordinating fabrics. And as you can see, we went a little brighter. <laughs> 
You'll find that as you watch and see the things that I make. I have a tendency to go towards brighter tones. So we're going to lay out. That's the key thing, in my opinion, in working with your diamonds. Also, with a pattern like that, lay it out on a table and then be able to go, oh, there it is. I sew these together, go to my machine, come back, lay them down. Because otherwise, it gets confusing. Believe me, I know. So we're going to lay things out. And let's get another one of these. And I actually have a couple different colors because a little, one more color than I need because I couldn't really decide which I wanted. And as I'm talking, I need my pattern in front of me because, let's see, there we go. And we could go with an orange. Oh yeah, okay, okay, so we got my orange and we got a green. So I'm trying to decide between, let me move this down a little so we're in the camera shot. I'm trying to decide between, there we go, there we go. Now, as you can see, as I have it laid it out, it's kind of like I have rows. So if we look at the original, sometimes it's not always obvious what you've got, but you've got your, your middle and then you've just got rows down to a triangle and there's another row and then you, it just goes around. So those are my rows. So I'm trying to decide whether I want this green or the more subtle green. Thinking if I go with more subtle, my orange is really going to be really poppy. This way I've got a couple darker colors. We shall see when we get to the end. But for now, I'm not going to show you how to make the whole table runner, but I'm going to show you some gotchas. So here we have our rows. So this is how we're going to work on them. And there's going to be a, a triangle at the end of these to finish each row off. But when I first started making this, it was like, oh, okay. Great, I'll pick that up there and I'm gonna line up my points. I'm gonna line up my points of, of my diamonds and I'm gonna sew it, right? That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to line up our edges and sew. Well, if you were to do that, this is what happens. Oops. I don't know if you can see that. My edge, it didn't come out even. They didn't line up. It's off. It's like, what the heck? So I did a little, hmm, 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 hmm. What we need to do, obviously, when you're working with the diamonds, depending on how you've got your layout, you need to shift to compensate for that quarter inch. So what I decided, there's a variety of ways you could do this. And I'm one about marking to make it easy. So I took, take any ruler, but your diamond ruler happens to have a quarter inch marking on it. So what I wanted, so what I did was I took my quarter inch mark and I marked, and I wanna mark the quarter inch all the way to the edge of the seam. So I know right there, right there is my quarter inch. So with that said, then we're gonna just assume we're doing the green. So my, uh, I always get these wonky. So we want that. See how difficult this can be at times? We want that. Put it up on there. Ah, I know why. See, this is why sometimes it does take a little bit of double checking things. So I'm gonna mark it on both sides because it kind of depends on the angle that you're working with. So in this case, I want this end. Because of the way my triangles are, I need to put, I was flipping it up. So it's this corner down here. I need to know where 
that quarter inch mark is going to be on the edge of that diamond. And then I'm going to put this triangle on it. And line, ah, there we go. And line up the edge of my diamond with that mark. Therefore, it's still not quite, there it is, there's, there's what I was looking for, and you may need to pin it, you know, you just may need to pin it, but now if you go to the sewing machine, we're going to be able to see from our ruler here where we're going to sew, and your edges are going to come out right, such that when we flip it, there we go. Even, even here, I'm able to know as I flip that up, my edges are going to match. I'm going to have a little triangle poking out there on that end, but my, my lines will match, and then you will end up with... So that's what I did on this one here. So as you can see, I've got a quarter inch sticking out on that side, and a quarter inch sticking out on that side. But when we open it up, I have a nice matching seam. So there you go. That's kind of the trick of your diamonds and it all depends on your layout. So if you stitch them together like I did the first time and you go, uh, they're not lighting up, go back, mark your quarter inch on your fabric. It's just the easiest thing to do. Otherwise, you could eyeball it, you could put this on it and, and set it there. Marking is just so much easier. But even as you saw me do it, it's like, oh, oh, which end am I matching up? So it will make sense though. Once you mark them and then you flip the fabric up, it'll be obvious at which corner you need to match that, that quarter inch seam. That should make things go a lot smoother for you. So then in this pattern, what we'll do is we will sew all of these together following that same method of making sure we're matching our edges to my quarter inch mark. So basically we're, we're shifting a quarter of an inch on all of them and then it'll be a nice even line. And then once those are done, then you have another row to do the same thing. Then you're dealing with a straight line and then you just do it over and you're going to kind of match your, your quarter inch seam on the inside. And you know what? I am going to, yeah, so that's, that's what you need to do. Hope you found this helpful. Take care and have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video today. You can follow me by doing one, subscribing to this YouTube channel, hitting the bell icon on the subscribe button so you're notified every time I drop a new video. But you can also find me over on Facebook, Wendy J. Haney. So facebook.com slash Wendy J. Haney. Also, I have a Facebook group for people that love needlework, books, wine, all sorts of things also. The name of the group is called Life Fulfilled Quilting Needlework Wine. Basically, you can't miss it. It's facebook.com slash group slash life fulfilled. You'll be able to find it. You can also find me over on my website, wendyjhaney.com. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here and I appreciate all your comments and feedback that you're providing me. Take care.